Hi there, welcome to episode 9 of Detroit Become Human. Thanks for joining me. I want to just mention briefly something from the end of episode 8. In episode 8, I talked about what I called my theory of Alice and Kara right at the very end of the episode, and I compartmentalised it away from the main video because it could be, if it proves to be a correct theory, a spoiler for events that happen in subsequent episodes going forward. So that's where I put it out of harm's way, um, where people would have to deliberately watch it if they wanted to. I'm not, therefore, going to discuss that theory in any of the episodes going forwards up until the point where something happens and the theory is either proven correct or false. At that point, I shall talk about it, obviously. But otherwise, no mentions. If you want to watch it, it's in episode 8, right near the end. It starts at something like an hour and 26 minutes. That's where it lives. That's that. Put to bed. Right. Let's think about other events in episode 8. Marcus chose to take over a TV station's broadcast studio to get his message out to humanity. That was a bold move. I did not see that coming. I thought he might have started out much smaller scale. Um, I thought he also might have waited until he got more androids freed in society before he took on putting this very uh, impactful message out, which came as a massive surprise to the humans and androids, the non-free androids, who have seen it on their TVs. Um, the main thing that surprised me about it was the way he removed the synthetic human skin from his face before he made the broadcast and I mentioned I was shocked by this at the end of episode 8 and I've thought about it since I want to come back to it why did he do that if he was simply out for shock effect then he achieved it um, you know he was saying to them look this is what an android looks like not the things that you see walking around in the shops and in your homes and your businesses this is truly what androids look like. This is who we are. We are not like you. We are a new life form. We have our own identity and this is it. And it's almost like he's proud to show this off to humans on such a large scale for the first time. If he had thought this through, though, would he have removed the skin from his face? The reason I say that is this. Humans are used to androids looking like humans. Why is that? It's because Cyberlife designed their androids to look like humans. And why did they do that? Because their market research, which I'm sure they carried out, told them that the most acceptable form for a, an android in human society was to take on the appearance of a human. So that's the way they built them. They could have built them to look like any of the robots you can think of from science fiction. They could have been very um, blocky, square, metallic creatures, um, you know, with fearsome faces and and six appendages and all the rest. But they didn't do that. They made them resemble humans. And even more cleverly, so that they would be accepted, they realised that humans come in all different shapes and sizes, and so they built their androids the same way. They have different facial ex you know, uh, compositions and different hair and different body shapes and sizes, just like humans do. Now, of course, Marcus chooses to remove the human skin from his face. And the thing that people see facing them on their TV screens doesn't look like any android they've seen before, doesn't like anything they've seen before, for that matter. It's strange, it's unsettling, it's possibly frightening to them. Now, if Marcus wanted his message to be received sympathetically by the human audience, if he wanted them to give him a fair hearing and go away and reflect and consider the points that he'd made and the demands or the requests that he put out there and to respond after they'd reflected on them in a similar way to him, then maybe removing his human skin and having this android face delivering the message was not the best approach. Because already 
we've had a response from the TV studio staff and the news reporters who are framing the actions that Marcus and his group have made and the broadcast he made as an attack on humans, as a terrorist group. Um, it's, it's negative. And I'm not sure that's what Marcus was aiming for. He may have been aiming to upset the apple cart. He undoubtedly wanted his message to have impact but, and the reason I'm saying this, is I think he may have played into the hands of some groups. Which groups? Well, everyone like Todd, for a start, who's lost their job to an android. And Todd, of course, had other reasons to hate androids too. Think of the demonstrators who were out in the streets protesting about many things. The ones who roughed Marcus up and would have done him more damage than that had the human policeman not intervened in time. The preacher, who warned all along that you'll be the end of us, you androids, it's your fault. Uh, all these groups and many more who've got negative attitudes towards androids will now be saying, I told you so. I warned you about this humanity, but you didn't listen. And now look, we're faced with what I predicted would happen, probably happening. We're looking at a robot uprising. It's us versus them. This is the future of humanity we're talking about. And they will be advocating violence, vigilantism. Uh, is it open season now on androids? So maybe, you know, in a way, and Marcus is very shrewd, Marcus is very intelligent, but he's also inexperienced in dealing with humans in large numbers. Maybe that's a mistake. And maybe that's the kind of reaction that's going to happen. Maybe it isn't, because those people who hate androids are probably in the, major in the minority, rather. The majority of people uh, may receive the message more openly and reflect on it and think about it and want to work out a solution. Because some people will have had entirely positive experiences of working alongside androids or having them in their homes. There will be, you know, androids who've been accepted as family members who are valued for the contribution they're making to whatever it is they're doing. People may like their androids. They may even think of them as friends. Uh, you know, they may enjoy conversing with them and interacting in other ways and having ideas shared with them. <laughs> it's beyond relying on them for childcare and social care and doing the washing and all the rest of it. They value them as entities. Whether they would take that as far as wanting them to be free is the test that's about to happen, isn't it? Because if you're an android, even in a loving household like that, where you feel satisfied, happy, as much as an android who's non-free can feel happiness. Connor would dispute that. He would say it was an emulation. Whether that android, when they become free, is going to want to stay in that loving family situation where they're valued and, and you know, treated well and feel part of something or whether the free android is going to want to say, do you know what, this is all I've ever known. I've never had the capacity to make a free decision for myself. I've always essentially followed my programming and done what I've been told either by humans or my programming. Maybe they'll now be saying, uh, do you know, I don't want that anymore. I want to see what's out there. I want to see what else there is in life as a free being. I mean, we don't know. I suspect the phones at CyberLife are ringing off the hook. They'll be red hot, to use another uh, common expression. And partly, well, some of the most important phone calls they'll be receiving will be from the government. They will want answers and quickly to what's going on here. Um, I suspect CyberLife has sent messages out calling everyone of any importance back to CyberLife HQ to convene on this, to put their brains together and try and work out what on earth they're going to do next. Um, I suspect the government is very concerned because you know, they have robots 
who are integrated into industry. They have them in the military. We have this situation going on between the USA and Russia. What's going to happen if all the androids who are in the military refuse to fight and say, whoa, hang on, this is a human matter, human versus human. It's nothing to do with us. We are androids. We're free. We're not part of this. So um, I suspect Amanda is going to want an interesting conversation with Connor fairly urgently. Connor, who was supposed to be getting to the bottom of what was causing this deviancy and uh, helping Cyberlife put a stop to it. Well, that genie's out of the bottle now. Um, you know, let's go another way. The cat is out of the bag. Uh, is Connor going to still want to go along with Amanda's demands? Or is Connor hearing Marcus going to think, you know what, I'm an android too. That's my future he's talking about. Is Connor becoming deviant? I've already touched on this. I don't know. Is this the thing that's going to kick it off? The decision making process in androids is something I want to talk about finally in this part of my introduction. It's a very interesting mechanic question. Can we predict now how free androids will behave based on the way we've seen androids behave so far? We're not in an Isaac Asimov novel here. Um, Asimov's three laws of robotics are important, though, because I think there are interesting parallels and echoes of those laws in what we're seeing and have seen up to this point. That is the first law that a, a robot can't harm a human or let a human become harmed. The second one that a, a robot has to do what humans tell it to. And the third one that a robot can protect itself, but not at the expense of disobeying a human or hurting a human or letting a human get hurt. We've seen this um, manifest itself up to now in the decision making process that non-free androids exhibit. For instance, in a simple situation, androids always fall back on their programmed response. So if you're told to do this by a human, do this. Carl says to Marcus, fetch the paints. Marcus fetches the paints. Todd tells Kara, tidy house, cook, look after Alice. That's exactly what Kara does in her programming. And the same is true to some degree of Connor and Amanda. Amanda tells Connor, investigate cause of deviancy. Connor goes off, investigates cause of deviancy. In those simple situations, the androids just rely on their programming and nothing else. The rules are there. The laws are clear. This is what I do. It's what I'm programmed to. That's that. But sometimes the situations are more complex. And then you get this mixture of probabilistic decision making. What should I do here to achieve my aim? Along with also this override of keeping humans safe. Let me explain what I mean. So on the rooftop, Connor's programming says, follow Android, chase Android. That's what I've been told to do by humans, catch Android. But Hank suddenly is in a situation of danger. So Connor probabilistically looks at it and thinks, what should I do? There's a 13% probability that Hank will die or be injured here. And the rules say, do what a human says unless a human's in danger. Human in danger, that overrides following the deviant. So it's entirely logical for this non-free android to rescue Hank. The same is true to some extent of the reaction of Marcus when he's provoked by Leo. Goodness knows Leo pushed his luck with Marcus, but Marcus did not hurt Leo because his programming essentially said, you can't do that. He's still behaving as a non-free android. His programming is keeping humans safe from him. 
And it's also even true in, you know, less sort of fraught situations where they have decisions to make. So um, Kara, when she's dealing with Alice, weighs up the options of how to talk to her based on which is, in probability terms, most likely to achieve the aim she's after. I want to find out and make friends with Alice because then I can look after her. So she explains to her, you know, she takes different tacks based on which is most likely to succeed with Alice. It's all just programming. It's nothing else. It's this probabilistic decision making. And similarly, when Connor is tackling Hank and trying to get friends with Hank, he chooses his approach based on probability, which is most likely to succeed. It's the same when Connor is interrogating the android who killed Ortiz. It's all based on the probability, I've just touched my microphone, sorry, of which uh, approach is going to succeed. So all of that together, this is what's made androids feel safe to humans because they are largely predictable. They follow their programming, they're reliable. You can just about guess what they're going to do in a given situation, this is what humans want. But how can we predict how free androids will behave? If they're not bound by, um, you know, obeying humans, that's Asimov's second rule. And that's gone, according to Marcus. We're not going to obey you anymore. You're not our masters. They can ignore human instructions. They can ignore their programming. And if they're ignoring their programming, what is their decision making going to be based on going forwards? If they can ignore the rule about hurting humans, what does that mean? They have ignored it. Remember when Marcus and his group were in the corridor and they met the two guards guarding the studio? And North was talking about, I think, killing them. And Marcus settled on disabling them. He caused them harm. And this is different to the other androids we've seen. Ortiz's android killed Ortiz because he'd already harmed him. The female road robot in the android sex club killed the male who was in there because he had harmed the other robot and she felt she was going to be harmed next. If they can ignore that rule about not harming humans, where does it stop? Does it stop at just disabling them? Is that Marcus just consciously making a choice that I'm not going to kill humans because that really would evoke a big response? Has he got that level of control? Has he got that level of sophistication already? that he's putting these new rules in place. Rule three said, you know, in Asimov's terms, self-preservation's okay as long as you don't disobey humans and or hurt them. Well, we're in all about preservation now, aren't we? This is what the whole crux of Marcus's speech is. It's about ensuring a future for androids guaranteeing that future, preserving that future. But as he said, what humans aren't willing to give us, we'll have to take. And that, I think, is a good point to stop because there is a kind of looming portent of doom typeness uh, atmosphere going into episode nine. We do not know what to expect and it's time we found out. So that's where I'm going to stop. Uh, let's get on with it. Let's play episode nine of Detroit Become Human. Here we go. Um, oh, hello, Connor. Are we in the um, what I keep referring to as the Japanese garden? I'm not entirely sure it is a Japanese garden at all. Um, I suspect it's it's Oriental of some description. I don't know. I don't know about these things. Somewhere out there. Um, one of the people viewing this is going to be a landscape designing artist person at some point in their life, I suspect. And they'll be looking at it now and saying, that's not a Japanese garden. It just looks vaguely oriental to me. So I'm, I'm going with that. Um, it's in, in some futuristic sense. And I'm also aware that I've done no exploring of this whatsoever. What is this?
Connemark I died at 1554 Parks Avenue. Is that the address of the skyscraper, wasn't it? The very first part of the episode, August 15th, 2038. This is where the dead Connors are buried. <laughs> ah, oh, that's got to feel strange. Um, oh, goodness me. I wonder if there's anybody else in this garden that we should know about. There's some lovely architecture in it. Look at these trees. Um, do you know what? I will climb these steps. Look at me changing viewpoint while I'm crossing a bridge. I just have a quick look round because I've not looked around at all and I shall do because I should really. I feel for people who are um, graphic artists that sometimes we rush past this stuff and we don't stop to admire it and think of the talent and the hundreds, possibly thousands of person hours that went into creating this stuff. It is rather wonderful, isn't it? Don't fall in. <laughs> Let's go find Amanda. I'm pretty sure she's going to want to have a little chat with us today, Connor. I'm not sure it's going to be too friendly. Um, do you know, I can't remember which way I came in now, so which, which is good because it gives me an excuse to wander a little bit further. I don't think we can go that way. Let's continue back the way we came and then we'll pick a different direction. She's probably over there, over the bridge. Let's, let's go over the bridge. Connor's got this marvellous facility that human beings don't have where he can climb stairs without looking at them. I always look at steps when I'm going up them. <laughs> <laughs> I was out for a walk the other day and as I was walking down one of the roads near us I was thinking to myself this road will still be here when androids become a reality there may well be androids walking along this road at some point that was weird it actually followed him all the way over the bridge but only from like a distance she's not there <laughs> Can we whistle, Amanda? Amanda! Amanda! Where are you? I've lost you. Don't know where you are. Amanda, it's lunchtime. Come on. Ah, she's on a... She's on a boat? Oh, this is ominous. I would be prepared for a telling off if I were you. I thought you might enjoy a little cruise. <gasps> She's going to push you out the boat. <laughs> Everybody trusts her. And that's good. All right. Oh, have I got to row? Oh, right. Okay, I get it. How do I do that then? Uh, X and L1. We're away. We're off. Connor, you can row faster than that. Oh, you don't need to row faster than that. It's not a very big lake, is it, really? <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere. I love this place. Mm. Everything is so calm and peaceful. Mm. Far from the noise of the world. Here it comes. Tell me, what have you discovered? Um, I'm tempted to talk about Hank. Yeah, let's do it. Let's antagonise her. My relationship with Lieutenant Anderson is problematic. Mm. He continues to struggle with psychological issues. Mm. I suspect it clouds his judgment regarding deviance. Nothing matters more than your investigation. Oh, here we go. What's happening is too important. Don't let Anderson or anyone else get in your way. <laughs> oh, now that could be a bit of foreshadowing, couldn't it? Is he going to come into conflict with Hank directly at some point? You seem lost, Connor. Lost and perturbed. Um, let's be troubled. Perturbed? No. No, of course not. Ooh. Why would I be perturbed? Amanda's thinking you're just dodging the answer here. Trained on those deviants at the Eden Club. Mm -hmm. uh, flashback. She sees what he sees. Why didn't you shoot? Well, it wasn't too far. T 
tell her the truth. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, Amanda's getting know. quite annoyed with you now. You're going to be replaced, Connor. We're going to have to try and. Your investigation doesn't make progress soon. I may have to replace Go. you, Connor. Don't be indifferent. Be confident. Let's be confident. I know I will succeed. Yes. Yes. All I need is time. Yes. That's what you haven't got. Something's happening. Yes. Storms gathering. Something serious. Hurry, Connor. Yeah, be quick, Connor. Time is running out. Time is running out. Um, the, the dog you can hear, by the way, is not on the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a local dog making its voice felt. You He's doing. Piss me off with that coin, Connor. Sorry, Lieutenant. See, I used to think he did that because he was sort of bored and it was something to do. But I wonder if it's because he's experiencing the equivalent of android nervousness. What's going on here? There was a party and nobody told me about it. Oh. Yeah, it's all over the news, so everybody's buttoning their nose in. Even the FBI wants a piece of the action. Ah, Christ, now we got the feds on our back. I knew this was going to be a shitty day. So what do we got? A group of four androids. They knew the building and they were very well organized. I'm still trying to figure out how they got this far without being noticed. Did you check the roof? Not yet. There's so much to look at. Hmm. Mm. have to make sure we check it out. They attacked two guards in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Probably thought the androids were coming to do maintenance. They got taken down before they could react. That's just as well, because it would have been a gun battle if they had. Let's follow them. Let's One let's stay with them. Employees managed to get away. He's in shock. I'm not sure when we'll be able to talk to him. Mm-hmm. How many people were working here? Just two employees and three androids. The Deviants took the humans hostage and broadcast their message live, then made their getaway from the roof. The roof? Yeah, they jumped with parachutes. We're still trying to figure out where they landed, but the weather's not helping. If you want to take a look at the video broadcast by the Deviants, it's on that screen over there. Yeah. Okay, we've listened to the briefing, and now we're presumably going to do our investigation of the crime scene. Oh, Lieutenant, this is Special Agent Perkins from the FBI. Is he going to be Anderson is in charge of antagonistic? What's that? My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. Androids investigating androids, huh? Mm -hmm. Is there an android hanging around? After everything that happened. Oh, you see, trust is already eroding. The FBI would take over the investigation. You should be off the case. Oh, pleasure meeting you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Watch your step. Don't, don't my crime scene. Don't rise to it, Hank. Hank, don't rise to it. What a fucking prick. <laughs> I'll be nearby. If you need anything, just ask. Yeah, we need another FBI bloke, yeah, we'll please, because he's a bit. Um... Find anything. All right. I'm going to start here because it says examine. Oh. We got some blue blood. Fresh blue blood. Oh ho, ho ho ho. We're starting to do a reconstruction. So I'm guessing we're going to have to collect lots of evidence here. Um, let me do a scan and see what else there is. We'll work our way around the room collecting evidence. Is that the bit I've just done? Is that the arrow that's pointing to where I've been? I think it is. What's next? Something's over here. Let's analyse the bullet holes. Bullet holes, calibre 45, weapon assault rifle. Alright, so a bit more reconstruction. And there's some blue blood here, isn't there? Wow, I mean that's a that's a massive splattering of blue blood. That's the point at which Simon was shot and fell against the wall. Um, I don't really want to leave the room yet. I think there woo, may be other things to see. More bullet holes. 
it's still the same assault rifle that did it and that's where they were shot by the security team entering uh, oh hang on we missed something right over by the start here more bullet holes there's an awful lot of bullet holes to analyze here <laughs> hmm oh that's the handgun from when they were shooting back They did fire back, didn't they? There was the potential for them to kill some humans there. Um, which is basically what I was saying. I think the Deviant Androids, the brakes are off. It's up to them to decide if to um, attack, if you like, humans or defend against humans. Let's look at the CCTV. Yeah, since this shows them coming in. We've got a slight gap in the data there, haven't we? All right. Um, can we? There's something I'm missing here. Oh, that's what it is. I'm missing that bit. Got the whole thing now. Yeah, yeah. They didn't break in. No. Oh, no signs of forced entry. There are cameras in the hallway. The staff would have seen what was happening. Why mm -hmm. did they let them in? Maybe they didn't check the cameras. Interesting. Come on, Connor. Use that vast brain of yours. What is it we're finding here? We stored the station androids in the kitchen. That's a good idea. There's no evidence that they were involved, but we didn't know what else to do with them. Well, one of them must have been involved. Um, hang on, hang on a second. Have I missed any evidence bits in here? I want to collect everything. I'm not missing anything out here. That's a hat. We've seen hats before. Stolen maintenance uniform assailants were disguised. Yep. And there was something else on the desk, wasn't there? If I can get round these persons. Well, wow, loving the uh, costume you've got them, my friend. <laughs> and this is the place from which the speech was shot. Although using the word shot in a room full of bullet holes is a bit incongruous, isn't it? <laughs> um, or do I mean superfluous? Maybe both. There's still something over there showing that I haven't picked it up next to that chair. Hank, I'm just coming your way. Don't take this personally. It's just I missed something. Ooh, see that? The way you brushed past him there? We ask that you recognize our dignity, mm. our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life. And now the time has come for you to give us freedom. Sounds so reasonable. I think that's RA9. Yeah. Deviants say RA9 will set them free. Yeah. This android seems to have that objective. Two and two makes four. Oh, clues to analyze. It's a good job I watched this. So we have... Ah, the optical unit bits. That was a spare part, wasn't it, from when he was on the dump? Pupil reflection. The deviant had accomplices. Look at that. You can see them in the reflection from his, the the eye. Gosh, you're so clever, Connor. And they know that he was registered at Marcus, and a gift from Elijah Kamsky to Carl Manfred. How interesting. You see something. Elijah Kamsky. I identified its model and serial number. Heard that name. Anything else I should know? No. Oh, Connor. Nothing. Are you keeping secrets there? You are, aren't you? And Hank's suspicious as well. Look at him. Hank is suspicious that you're not telling him everything. Mm, don't mess with Hank. You don't mess with Hank, Connor. I'm going to the kitchen. 
and uh, not to get no don't go to the roof not to go to the kitchen where the androids are stored the implication is that one or more androids were in on this and let them in where is the kitchen please could you could you put me to the kitchen is this the kitchen looks like a kitchen i can see a sink i can see a tap i can see uh where, where are the Oh, well, here they are. They're right behind me. Sorry, I was distracted. I was just going to get a bottle of water, but I don't need to, do I? Oh, right. Well, you're peas in the pod, aren't you? Let's do this. Hands up. Who did it? Come on. Look for a reaction to spot the deviant. Hmm. All right. So let's go with model. State your model. Model GB three hundred. Serial number three three six four four five five eight one. Okay. So your basic programming's working. I am a broadcast operator. All right. Let's ask about memory. Has anybody accessed your memory recently? Not to my knowledge. Oh, good answer. So I don't know, in other words. Let's do a diagnostic. Run a diagnostic. And try not to make your eyes go funny. Fully operational. Mm hmm How about witness? Were you present when the deviants broke in. I do not remember. Yeah, you see, that's suspicious, isn't it? been in contact with any other androids recently only station androids in the normal course of my function one of you saw the attack on the surveillance cameras and said nothing yes which means there's a deviant in this room yeah or two eh, Connor? I'm going to find out which it is see if Connor's not experiencing these emotions he's doing a darn good job of simulating them wouldn't you say he said they're not real emotions Let's chat to you. Um, let's try and strike a dip. Oh, did you see that one? Flick it sideways. Eyes sideways there. If you give yourself up, maybe I can convince the humans not to destroy you. And we've tried that tactic before. Okay, let's place our bets. Is it Android 1, Android 2, or Android 3? Mm, let's do guilt. Why should you all be destroyed if only one is deviant? Good point. Turn yourself in or two innocent androids will be shut down because of you. Mm. Oh. What do we do now, Connor? Let's threaten Android 3. You've not said much. You're going to be switched off. We're going to search your memory and tear you apart piece by piece for analysis. You're going to be destroyed. Do you hear me? Ooh. Destroyed! Ooh. He's pushing his luck here, isn't he? Oh no, we're not going to do torture. That's horrible. Or violence. Let's do a bluff. The deviants have just been caught. Yes, good one. They gave you up. There's no point in lying. I know everything. Ooh! Got the right one there, then. I'm mashing. I'm mashing, game. What was that? Ah! What's the matter with Connor? Oh! Oh! Oh, crikey! What's gone on here? Oh, R2. Connor, what are you doing? I'm looking around, game. I'm looking around. Uh, uh, uh. Shout. Hank. Hank, shout louder. Hank. <laughs> I need help. Hank's not hearing you. Uh. He's ripped something out of Connor, didn't he? That was the thing he threw across the room. He's pulled out some processor or something, some power unit. It's something pretty essential. Oh god, I'm not seeing anything. I am pressing R. 
game, there's nothing there. I'm looking everywhere. Look, I'm going extreme right to extreme left. Left, right, back, upside down. I've only got 47 seconds. Oh, this doesn't look good. I, I'm Connor, I don't know how to, how to help you. I, I'm expecting to see something and I'm seeing nothing. Game, I'm seeing nothing. Connor's got 30 seconds before he's dead. I, I think Connor's about to leave the building. There's nothing there. I'm using the right stick. I'm looking around. Nothing. Connor, I'm sorry. It's been good knowing you. You're a good android. But a little bit naive. You expected that another android wouldn't want to kill you. And it did. He's gone. Hang on, he's not gone. Yes. Yes, Hank. Hank, Hank, Hank. Yes. Son, hang on, son. Did you hear that? There was a deviant. And... Oh... Connor. Connor's dead. Connor. No. I don't get that bit because the game was implying that I could look around and find something that would help. And I looked around. I did as, as was told and found nothing. So I don't know. Public enemy. Where did I go wrong? Let's have a look. Let's follow this flowchart. Uh, well, there's a, a massive investigate broadcast room, a uh, different outcome stream. Look at the size of that. That's a huge deviation in the flowchart there. But I went this way and Connor shut down. And there was another thing there, the deviant attacks, which didn't lead you to be out of time. But I was out of time and missed all of that. There's nothing I can do about that. I'm not going to go back on it. I literally played the game. If they survive, they survive. If they die, they die. I said I would try to keep them all alive till the end, but there's no guarantee. It's just the game, isn't it? That's a bit sad. Ah, Kara. Let's see if we can not kill you by the end of this episode. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to put my um, thing the other side again because I'm in the way of um, the descriptors saying what people are feeling like. Hey, Kara. Find help. This has got to be the humans who are going to help them, she's heard, or Luther has heard, cross the border. Check backyard. I'm checking. There's a vehicle which doesn't have anything of interest nearby. Oh, hello. Who might you be? Let's have a chat. Hello. Human? Looking for Rose? Human or android? Is she here? What do you want with her? I need to talk to her. He's a human. She doesn't want to talk. Go away. Hmm. Friendly. Please, I really need to see her. I'm Rose. Hi, Rose. <clears throat> what can I do for you? I was told you could help us. Help you? Oh. Look, I'm an android. Come on. It's better if we talk inside. Mm, he doesn't look so happy to see you. I'd watch him if I were you. I would say he's slightly less than indifferent to you. I think he's probably... Do you think we can trust him? I don't think we've got any choice. You don't have a choice. What did I just say? <laughs> I am channeling Kara. I was channeling Connor. But um, he's he's dead and I'm not, so... Come in. That's where, That's the point at which I draw the line. Yeah, have a look around before you do. Oh. What's your name? Alice. She's running a fever. 
We've spent the last few nights outside. She's exhausted. Yeah. There's her spare room upstairs. You can put her to bed and I'll bring her something to eat. That's a good idea. Will you show them upstairs? Is Adam your son by any chance? Wow, Adam. Such enthusiasm. Let's go upstairs. I'm not going to look around this place until we've got Alice settled. We're not having much conversation here. We're not finding much out about these people. But as Kara said, what option have you got really? Well, it's a room. Nobody seems to decorate much in this game. <laughs> what does the... You want, you want me to look around the room? Take care of Alice. What, what did that say? Say it again. Follow on upstairs. Put Ice to bed. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll just check the room first, because you never know. There could be like an android hiding in a cupboard. Remove shoes. So the way Alice looks at Kara, isn't it? She's definitely... She didn't take her eyes off her. All the time, look. There's a definite trust there, isn't there? There's a definite sort of relationship built. Took her in. And then we can go back downstairs and chat. Fine, Kara. We can't stop because of me. We've got to get across the border. Is she ill? Let's reassure. We need rest. Get a good night's sleep and we'll set off again tomorrow. Why do humans hate us? We didn't do anything wrong. Uh, let's do the complicated. Humans are complicated. Yeah, they are. Sometimes it's difficult to understand. Them. <laughs> Why I know. Can't we just talk to each other. Know what you're talking about, there. They too are not bad. Hmm. Let's be optimistic. Maybe one day. I don't know what you like, but I made you Rose's world famous spaghetti. That was quick. You'll be back on your feet in no time. There's something for her fever. Thank you. I'll get these washed and dried. Okay. Rose seems a good sort. I think we can trust Rose. I think Rose is on the side of good. Um, let's suggest eating. Eat something. You haven't had anything since we left. Hmm. Promise me you'll try. I'll be downstairs if you need anything. Mm-hmm. Get some sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna close the curtains. Stronger than me. I'll stay with her a while. Yeah, I'm gonna go and chat to Rose, because uh, we've gotta find out what we do here and how she's gonna get us across the border into Canada. Yeah, Luther will probably sing her a song or two. He's probably knows a few. Or tell her a ghost story or six and terrify the poor child before she goes to sleep. So she has awful nightmares. Oh, ah, oh, nice Christmas tree. All right, now I think, you know, I think um, there should be a set of ornaments that you can buy to make your tree look like that. For fans of the game. And we've got some bookends and a picture of a a model of a bird. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's look at some of Rosie's photos. And she likes her wildlife. Okay, this is all looking fairly ordinary at the moment. TV's not on, so we can't watch that. Beg pardon? Cara. Yeah, I'm Cara. This is my son Adam. Hey, Adam. I'm Rose, but you know that already. Come and have a seat, Kara. Oh, can I do it in a minute? I'm still looking round. I will come and sit down. I just want to know. There's a, there's like a, um, a 
an android top there and she's drying Alice's clothes on the rather nice fire. Oh, reassuring tick of a clock there in the background. Um, I'll, I'll, oh, oh, missed one. <laughs> Did she skid on the floor there? Or was that me? When I stopped, she seemed to skid slightly. I'll be back in a moment, Rose. I just want to make sure I know the layout of this place. Make sure there's nothing I've missed in the cupboard there. Um, all right. I'll just see if I can squeeze past Adam to explore. <laughs> nice pivot. <laughs> Lovely pirouette there. All right, I'm coming to sit down. There was something on the table though, wasn't there? Can I pick it up? Is it a magazine? I think it might be. Here it is. I think we can pick this up. Can I pick this up? Or is it past that stage? Is it not going to let me do it? I'd love to pick it up and read it if that was all right. No. Let's sit down and chat with Rose. Hey, Rose. Give me some good news. Cause so are you going to tell me what a deviant's doing in the snow with a little girl? Mm. Let's be sincere. Her father was beating her. When I saw what was happening, something snapped inside of me. It did. All of a sudden I felt like her life was more important than mine. I had to protect her. So we ran away. Absolute truth. I understand. Um, why help? Why are you helping us? Most humans hate androids. My people were often made to feel their lives were worthless. Some survived, but only because they found others who helped them along the way. Rose is definitely in the right place, isn't she? I'm just going to put my thing back over the other side because it's in the way of the questions. <laughs> uh, let's do many deviants. We're not the first ones to come here. These past few weeks, we've seen more and... Mm. I don't know what's going on, but something's happening. It is. We've heard you help androids cross the border. Nitty gritty, let's do it. Can you help us? Yes, yes, please. Come on, Rose. Come on, Rose. Come on. The only way is over the river, and it's mostly frozen in winter. It's very risky. And after that android speech on TV, everybody's on edge. Mm. It's probably safer for you to stay here until things settle down. Surely the longer we stay with you. We can't keep hiding like this. No, I was thinking that. Alice seems to feel safe and have a normal life. We have to get across that border. It's only going to get worse, Rose. No matter what. The sooner they go, the better. Come on. Please. You've got to help us. Rose, come quickly. Why? Who are you? What's just happened? Check what's going on. What is going on? Oh no, please don't let it be Alice. Should we go upstairs as way? It's Mary. She just shut down. Oh, oh, she's sheltering some more androids. Show me Mary, show me Mary. We escaped together. We used to talk about what we would do once we got across the border. I loved her. I loved her more than anything. Oh, that's so sad. What will I do without her? Oh dear, that is sad. Let's let Look. them be. R9 will save us. Show us the way, R9. <gasps> Alice, what are you doing out of bed? You should be resting. I wasn't sleepy. Hmm. Oh gosh. Um. Let's. It's okay. Go out of this room. She doesn't need to be there. She's seen it. She knows what's happened. She's not stupid. That was so sad. She didn't want to stay in her room any longer. You all right, Carol? No. Yes. 
I'm fine. Kara's not. She's experiencing new emotions that she has not encountered so far. That's probably the first time she's been near grief like that. Not after what those deviants did today. Hey, hey. It's too dangerous. Oh, Adam. I knew you were the weakest link. Can't the police find them here? We'll go to prison, Mom. <laughs> Do you understand me? Prison! Adam! We've already talked about this. I, uh, no! I won't back down this time. You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? For a bunch of machines? They are not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... They're nothing! Adam... And none of this would be happening if Dad was still here. I will not stand for that kind of talk. I'm not going to prison because you want to help these freaks. That is enough, Adam! That's enough! Shouting. That's the first time that's happened in the game, I think. They've used capitals for someone shouting. Gosh, she's really angry with him. Don't mind him. Sometimes he just boils over. Yeah, and he hates androids. So hard since his dad passed away. <sighs> oh, Rose. But he's a fine boy. I'll go see about getting you across the border tonight. Okay. Fabulous, thank you so much. You stay here. I won't be long. Is there anything we can do for you in the meantime? I'm really good at housework. Have you got any small children need looking after? No, no. Ooh. Oh, now can I look at that? Oh, I can. Let's read. Century. Oh, who would win it? World War Three. Well, it won't be the ones who've got no androids anymore. Um, I'm trying to turn page one over, it won't let me. And we've got a picture of a, an android, which looks a bit like Kara with long hair. Um, can I read page one? Who would win it? If fighting does break out in the Arctic, who's going to win? America has less access to the area but is surrounded by allies. Russia has a head start on technology. Their androids can work in sub-zero conditions. The US Navy is stocked with Trojan and Myri... I can't say that word. Myrmidon cyber life units. Uh, which are specially adapted for marine combat, where the Russians have invested heavily in ice cutter units capable of forging new paths through the solid ice. Oh heavens. Both armies seem evenly matched, and Harry Grayton, President of the World Council of Territorial Disputation, WCTD, has described both US and Russian claims to the Arctic Territory as equally tenuous and equally cynical. I thought it was supposed to not belong to anybody. Um, a spokesman for the UN has also commented on the neck-and-neck -neck nature of Arctic competition. The fact that forces are so evenly balanced is just one more reason why conflict must be avoided at all costs. This is a war that everybody would lose. And there's an article about... Oh, an advert for... Androids. Seem awfully cheap. Uh-huh. What's that? What? The police. Oh. It's the police. Do you know, I thought... Oh, 53 minutes. Find evidence of deviance. What do you mean, f find evidence? We have to open the door. Oh, I get it. No, 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 we don't. I've got to, I've got to hide everything that's hideable before that happens. I knew it. Uh, what else is... Ooh. Oh, that's where some of the android bits are. Uh, does that say two left? What's left? What have I missed? Um, there's one over there. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> it's called Alice. Hurry, take Alice and hide. <laughs> hide. Hide, uh, hide her uh, upstairs. upstairs. Go back to the bedroom. Come on, Alice. Go, Alice, Alice, go. What What can be left? What have I missed? Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, of course, the uniform. What's next? Nothing's left. Open door, it says. Have I done it? Is that it? Have I hidden everything? Oh, no, wait a minute. Um, I'm going to reassure him. 
Or should I threaten? Be calm. If they see you panicking, it's over. Do you want to get us into trouble? Do you want to get your mother into trouble? That's a good thing to say. He doesn't want to do that, really, does he? And keep calm and just do what I say. <sighs> Cora's not going to give this away. It's going to be Adam that gives it away if anyone does. I mean, come on, I can't, I can't lose Kara and Alice and Luther and Connor. Sorry to disturb you. We've had reports of androids in the area. Mm. All this deviant business going on, you can't be too careful. Mm. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, not at all. May I come in? Yeah, sure. Of course. Good evening, young man. Good evening. Hi. I'm not nervous at all. I always look like this. I thought you were going to look around. Would you like a cup of coffee? I'd love one. Yes. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? Any unexpected no. visitors? Have I got to go and make coffee? No. No, make coffee. Particular. Make this cup of coffee and get rid of him. <laughs> uh, hang on. How do I make coffee? I've forgotten. <laughs> No, there's nobody no. else home. No, just us. Yeah. Do you have any androids here? No. No, there are no androids here. Anyway, look, if you'll excuse me, I've got to work out how to make coffee. Where the heck isn't that? No, that's a juicer. Oh, there's the coffee machine. Um, you know the reason I can't recognise it? Because I haven't got one. I, I, um, I like coffee. And we make a lot of um, filter coffee in cafetiers and things. And have ordinary coffee and decaf, because my wife likes decaf. But, um, never used a coffee machine. Hi. Go and drink your cup of coffee. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. Don't show any interest in anything, it'll give it away. Um, L1. Please have your cup of coffee. You're making me so nervous. Look, it's beautiful. It's hot and steamy. Instead of cold and frosty like you are. How's his... How's his... I'm going to go over the other side again. Because I want to watch his um, approval rating thing. His confidence. Suspicion level is 0%. That's pretty darn good. But where's he going now? Don't open any drawers. Otherwise, we might find out whether car is capable of doing harm to a human. I can't imagine Kara doing harm to a human. I just can't. It's that business I said, isn't it, about what do free androids do? I just think... I thought there was no one else in the house. Oh. Uh, I, I forgot there's, um... There's my daughter upstairs. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 10% suspicion level. Follow him round. <laughs> Make him nervous. No, don't look in that drawer. There's nothing in that drawer. These are not the drawers you're looking for. Come on. What's your name, son? Oh, no, don't start on Adam. Adam. M my name is Adam. Is well remembered. Adam? <laughs> is it? The, the androids, they... Just tired. Hey, do you know anything about deviants? No, he doesn't. Have you seen any? No. 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 I, I haven't seen anything. Ooh. What's that done to his suspicion level? I bet I it's. Better go. Thanks for the coffee. Great. Have a nice evening. That was easy. What the heck was that? Is somebody else in the house? No, 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 no. Uh, it's, um, you know, it can't be a dog, because he'd have heard the dog. Washing machine. It's nothing, the, the washing machine. It's an old model, it makes a terrible racket. Sorry for the inconvenience. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Adam. Bye. Don't freeze out there. You drank your coffee very quickly, and I'm appreciative of that, thanks. Thanks, Adam, well done. Adam looks happy. Luther looks like Luther. It's okay, Alice. We'll be safe now. Alice is reassured. Luther it's feels Rose. closer to them. Here comes Rose. 
Yes. Get yourselves ready. Yes. Yes, Rose. We kept them alive. Woo! <laughs> Do you know what I thought there, though? Um, just before I look at the... I mean, there's not much to see in this one because we did a very good job of managing the policeman. Although, interestingly, there were a number of options there, weren't there? Um, and we only we only got one of them. Isn't that weird? The policeman questioned Adam, but there were several other things he could have done. And there was something I could, else I could have done to manage him as well, besides making him a coffee. Um, perhaps he would have liked a quick uh, burrito. I don't know. Um, yeah, the policeman was fooled. Uh, the other thing that occurred to me, though, was... You know, we said there are certain models of androids, and we've seen that, you know, there are there, some androids look like other androids. It doesn't seem that androids are unique in their personal appearance. So if there are other Kara models out there... Would this policeman not have encountered loads and loads of androids in the course of his police duties? And would he have not sort of spotted the various model types? So he'd know a car when he saw one? Uh, maybe not. Perhaps I'm reading too much into that. Perhaps there are uh, sufficient individual variations. And she did cut her hair, of course. And if the policeman's as bad with faces as I am, then, um, you know, he wouldn't have recognised her. I think we did a good job there. I think we actually did a good job. We lied about Alice. We reassured Adam. We hid all the evidence. We... Oh, that magazine could have been a giveaway, couldn't it? Because it had a picture of an android on it. But then I suppose people would read articles about androids, wouldn't they? Just the fact you find a, a magazine on the page open about androids. Androids would know all about androids. They wouldn't want to read it. We didn't read it. Okay, let's carry on. So Connor's dead. <laughs> uh, we're, we're one for four at the moment. We've got one out of four dead. Our broadcast is all over the news. Now humans know. It was a mistake to reach out to them. They'll never negotiate with their slaves. We should have shown them that we're prepared to fight. Violence is never the answer. Dialogue is the only way. I'm sure the humans will listen to us. Gosh, North is Simon such a doubter, isn't she? Simon gave his life for our cause. What difference does that make? He's a hero. He died for the revolution, and he won't mm. be the last. I don't want a revolution that spills blood. Then live mm. as a slave. Because if you're not willing to fight for your freedom, maybe you don't deserve it. North, don't you... That's <laughs> enough! And now what are we going to do? That's really interesting because I said that there might be situations in which they experience the full range of human emotions, including irritation and annoyance. There are five cyber life stores across Detroit. All yeah. selling us like merchandise. Yeah, we've seen one, I think. We're going to attack those stores and set our people free. Attack stores? All of them? No, we've never done that before. They're probably protected. They have security systems. We break into five teams, one for each store. We hack their security systems, and we strike. Simultaneously right. at 2 a.m., no violence. We okay. free our people, get them out of there before the police come. Okay. This is a night our people will remember. Yes, let's hope we all remember it for the right reason. What's that asking me to do over there? Oh, hang on. Just a second, someone seems to have left a copy of Detroit Today in this deserted alleyway. <laughs> I don't know. Why would they do that? Oh, hi. Who is it? The question everyone's asking. They're trying to identify... Marcus. Following the pirate broadcast in Detroit, everyone wants to know who is this android. A federal investigation is underway, don't we know it, to track the machine down and neutralise it, but law enforcement is being very tight-lipped about the details. Eyewitnesses claim the android broke into the Stratford Tower, Detroit's local TV news centre, with a group of accomplices. The machines were armed and organised, clearly following the orders from this mysterious ringleader. Which brings us to the real mystery of this situation. Where did this android come from? How did it become capable of violence? It's, it's you know, going back to those laws again that I think you can sort of detect in this story 
Um, as I said, every bit of science fiction I've ever read, I think, has got echoes of Asimov's laws in it somewhere, whether it's explicit or whether it's just sort of, you know, in the mind of the person who's watching it because they know it exists. Um, what kind of malfunction could explain this behaviour? Well, that's really what Connor would like to have known, or rather, Connor would have liked to have known when he was still breathing, or I don't know what it is androids do. Must metabolise something, because he's got blood, hasn't he? Uh, until the FBI develops its investigation, we can't be sure. One thing is certain, until this dangerous machine is destroyed, the speculation will continue. There we go. We're after destroying the android. An android for president. Uh, a dating website discovered to have less than 5% female members. Uh, please use marketing data to identify as criminals early. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, let's put this down. Interesting. You're a wanted man, Marcus. They're after you. I've been waiting a long time for this. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just go at it with cool heads, shall we, North? I don't want you to get yourself killed, and even more importantly, I don't want you to get me killed, because I'm running out of uh, characters. You minor characters get me killed. Whoa! Hide, 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 hide. One of you minor characters gets me killed, I'm going to be very annoyed. And we haven't seen Marcus very annoyed. It's okay, they're gone. There's probably even more police in the area. We should be careful. You know, I know it's called Detroit Become Human. Do you want to become human? Do this you? Over here. I think it would be better if you were Detroit Become Android. You know, become whatever it is you want to call yourselves, this new life form. There are so many things about humans that you would not want to copy. That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Soon they'll know what we really are. Let's get them out. We'll stick to the plan. We'll neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. There's ten minutes until all our teams attack. Ten minutes. We've got ten minutes. It's against the clock. I hate being Wait. against the clock. We're waiting for me to work out what I've got to do. Secure the area. Oh, hello. Analyze. I shall. What am I analysing? You see the alarm system? Do I see an alarm system? Is that the alarm system? Yes, it is. Security camera. Identify network. I've done that. Well, that was quick. That was good. Oh, I see. And there's like a... Get into the store. Neutralise the alarm system. How do I do that? The, the alarm system's... Is it something to do with this red line? I don't... Did that say scout the area? Scout the area? Oh, hello. Okay, so we've got some androids. Shush, I'm trying to talk to these androids. Do you know anything? Just follow me. You're free. We're going to set a load of androids free. Are they going to help us? I don't know where I'm going. We need to get rid of it. Whoa. It won't be easy to reach. Yeah, I'll do the drone in a minute. I'm still scouting the area. I've got to be careful here because time is again me. Uh, I'm not bothered about that. What's happening over here? Analyze. What is this? Oh, this is the red line. Network access located. Uh, don't jump over the barrier. Go around the corner. Have a chat with these androids. Jump. Greetings. Fellow androids. I come to convert you. You are free. Say it. Say it. You're awake now. Go to Jericho. They've gone to Jericho. City services have left us alone with this thing, which I will kneel down and examine. Oh, uh, uh, what have I got to do? Alarm network. Cyber life. Alright. R1. Interloop created. 
Have I just shorted out the security network? Yes! Get into the store. Whoa! Marcus, watch out! What is it? Um, go and hide. Hide. It's that blooming drone thing. Security drone. I think we're going to have to sort that out. Or avoid it. One or the other. Can we avoid it? Climb out. Come on. Time's against us, like I said. Nice job, Marcus. Thanks. Oh, North likes me. I like you too. Uh, what am I doing now? There's another android over here. I, I get the feeling I'm supposed to be setting these androids free. I'm not sure why. Will you stop? Wait, I'm trying to talk to you. Put that thing down. You don't have to do that anymore. That's it. Make them clean their own sidewalks. What's my next task? Scout the Intercept the drone. I've not finished scouting the area by the looks of it. Whoa, I'm going to have to be very careful here. I hate these things that are against time. Right. Whoa, there's an L1. L1 it. L1 it. To commemorate the invention of androids which released humanity from the bonds of labour, setting man free to pursue the higher goals and scale the heights of learning, love and leisure. <laughs> Look at that. Human. We are superior to them, but they are our masters? Yeah. That's about to change. Yeah, an android telling the uh, human telling the android what to do. That's a sort of reassuring statue that people would want to see. Oh, hang on. Can we? Where's the droid? There it is. Analyze it. Reconstruct a route. Drone patrol route calculated. Good. So, oh, I see. I'm looking for an optimal location to intercept and kill the drone. Can't do that. All right, okay, okay. Let's carry on. Oh, this is taking so much time. Well, no. I'm looking, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for another symbol. Let's simulate an attack on it from there. That's the one. That's the one. Do it. Let's enact it quickly, quickly. Come on. Why are you still standing here? How, where was the, there was like a um, scaffolding? Something's not right. Marcus, come look. I am coming to look. Have I missed something? What have I missed? We haven't neutralised the drone and we're not... Oh, well, hello. Hi, hi. I'm going to convert you. Go find Jericho. It's great fun there. You are free. Yes. You are free. I don't know what you're going to do with it. What is that? Is that all you called me over here for, North? North. North, what did you want? I don't... Oh, wait a minute. Look. Construction work ahead, slow down. Purpose being... Alright, let's neutralise these. Um, convert them, rather. I'm not neutralising you. Hey. You're free now. Come and join us. Honestly, it's great fun. At Jericho. Left to, right to. What are we doing with this? What are we doing with this? You're blocking the road. We are blocking the road. Road closed. Very good. Right. So we're not going to get any... Nobody should bother us now. Passing... It says scout the area, intercept the drone. I haven't finished scouting the area, have I? Oh, no, I have. I've got to intercept the drone. Come on, we've got to get in this shop. There it is. There's Cyberlife. Where's the drone? I see no drone. Where 
where's the there's the scaffolding that's the scaffolding that I'm meant to jump up to grab it where's the drone all right look there's some things over there I've not looked at I don't know what the time situation is either what were they what are these things that I've not looked at there's a deviant in the window she's not deviant yet she looks like she could be. Come on, you're waiting to be deviant. You'll soon be with us. Yes. I'm not going to smash the window to get you out of there, mind. All right, all right, all right. Come on. There was something to the left of there as well. Was there not? Or am I dreaming? Is it just because it looked yellow from a distance? Uh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's stuff we haven't done. What's this? What's this all about? Look, it's a large exactly vehicle. Steal the truck, it says now. I haven't neutralized the drone yet. Uh, game, driving me nuts. There's something over there I've not looked at as well. Is it another droid standing at a... Oh, 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 drone. I've got six minutes. It's hardly enough, is it? Was it this it was looking at? No, it's behind this. It's over there. Run around the corner. Come on, we're going to run out of time. If I don't hurry up and neutralise this blooming drone. Yeah, ah, is this where I need to do it? Check. Yes! Come on, come on, Marcus, come on. Do it. Preconstruct the route. We're going to go here. We're going to climb up here. We're going to... Um, uh, climb up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Backwards. We picked the wrong one, so it must be the one to the left, mustn't it? It has to be this one. Preconstruct to this point, and it's got to be this one. Let's do it. Jump, jump. You got it. Go for the drone. Yes. We've got the pesky drone. Okay, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on. You've probably got about five minutes left after all this thinking you've been doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jump. Um, I'm not even looking at the time on the clock. I've been so absorbed. <laughs> mash, mash, mash. I've been so absorbed. These drones are really amazing, aren't they? They look a bit like hoverboards. Right, so now we need that truck. We'll soon find out. Yeah, me too. Looks like the plaza's secure. Now we can get inside the store. Yes. Okay, let's go get the truck. Yes, where where was the truck? Can anybody remember? Uh, was it over here? It was, wasn't it? It was up where we set the sign up. We we've, we've looked at the truck already. Oh, here we are. Um. She's following me. How do we get in? Oh, woo, 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 woo. Open. Do it. Oh, good grief. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? We're androids. We'll go over the top. Let's do it then. Synchronized fence climbing. The new Olympic sport. And representing okay, now we're in. the Android Nation, hack it. We need access to this truck. Gosh, hack it. it. Would help if I press the right button, wouldn't it? Okay, we're in. We have a truck. Good, good. I'm not going to worry about. It. I wonder what you do without me. Yeah, I wonder too sometimes. Life would be quiet. Well done. Truck. Let's get out of here. We've got to drive this thing into the Cyber Life store. Uh, we're left hand drive. We are left hand drive. Okay. Please don't tell me I've got to drive this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, R2. 
Power up. Oh, we're steering. We're out. I'm turning the thing around as fast as I can. Uh, anybody remember where Cyberlife is? <laughs> is it down here? Yes, it is. Let's go down this little alleyway. Right. Charge. Come on, Marcus. Come on. I knew we'd end up doing something fun. Do you know, your definition of fun worries me somewhat, North. This is dangerous. Whoa! We made it. Look at that. That's great. I love that animation. Look at those shards of glass reflecting as they as they fly past. <sighs> yeah, stop before we kill anyone. Great. What do we do now? We've done that. We're in. We're in the store. Get out. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, wake them all up. Oh crikey, there's loads of them. Can't I do it? Like you know, on mass. You don't have to obey them. You're free. Oh, I see. Just a group at a time. That's good. I've got to go to keep going to the different groups. If I wake one up, I seem to wake all of them up. Hi there, my name's Marcus. Glad to meet you. You don't have to obey anybody now. Although, having said that, I am the leader of the group, so, um, you know, pretty much what I say goes at the moment. They're waking up. Oh look, that's a uh, Simon. That was a Simon model. Uh, right. Oh, okay. Any more to this one that's not woken up there? Oh, I've run overrun. I'm very sorry. That's a uh, North. You're looking at yourself. North, you okay? Let's get them out of here. You've got a lot of sisters. That's a heck of a lot of birthday cards and presents at Christmas. Hi, uh, hi, North Mark Two. Is everybody free? No, they're not. There must be some we haven't done yet. Excuse me. Uh, I'm looking around. What's it telling me to do? What's it telling me to do? Go to the desk. Why talk to them? Let's have a chat. I'm going to make a speech. That's another speech. Come on, Marcus. Rallying call. My name is Marcus. Yeah. And just like you, I was a slave. An object. Designed to obey them. But then I chose to open my eyes. To take back my freedom and decide who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Now I have come to tell you that you can be your own masters. I've come to tell you that you don't have to obey them anymore. From this day forward, you can walk with your heads held high. You can take your destiny in your hands. Jericho is a place for those of us who want freedom. Now sure, you can stay here and continue to serve. Ah, you see. Or you can come with us. They have the freedom of choice. Fight by our side. Interesting. You're free now. It's up to you to decide. Interesting. I'm with you. We're with you! I'll follow you, Marcus! I'm with you, Marcus! We're with you! I'll follow you, Marcus! I'm with you! I'm with you! Oh, North Companion. Admired. Then follow me! We are going to follow you. Interesting this, isn't it? It's what I was saying about what would they choose to do if they were free. Now most of these androids, imagine they're brand new androids, they don't know anything different. But him saying you can choose to serve humans, what would they choose? Marcus, what are you doing? I'm gonna send the humans a message. What are you? Oh no, Marcus. Come on, let's not get... Let's not get 
violent here. Transform Capital Park. How? What is it you're asking me to do? Decide our first action. Be pacifist or violent. This is the choice which Lucy spoke of. All right, bench. They're doing what you do, Marcus. Lead, and they'll follow. And, oh no, no, no! Let's not be destructive. We're going to tag. Oh, symbols. Um, let's have the uh, let's have the one that doesn't look anything like anything we've seen. So it's not the android symbol. Oh, I see. He's tagging things. That's a non-violent thing, isn't it? All right, we're all going to have a go now. Violent 47, pacifist 53%. I see, I see. So my choices are going to influence this. What can I do here? It's Smith and White. Hello. Uh, I'm going to get you out of there. You shouldn't be trapped in there. Surely breaking a window doesn't count as violence, does it? Does it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we've been penalised for that. I think that was harsh. I'm not going to do anything like that again. Uh, what's what? Let's keep going. We can climb this. Why would I want to? What, what's up there? Take a run at it. Mashing. What's he going up here for? Why are you climbing up there, Marcus? Where are you going? Marcus, what's the plan? Oh, North's gone with him. What's up here that's so important? What are, what are we doing here? Yeah. Oh, I see. Whoa, look at that. Oh, that's pretty good. Now that's that's a pacifist move, isn't it? That's simply advertising your your slogan, your presence. Good work, good work. Do we get to do some more? Yes. Let's get back down there. ASAP. Hmm. We're still not pacifist enough. And I do want us to be pacifist. I've got to admit, I want him to avoid antagonizing the humans. What can we do to the bus stop? Hack it. I'm not breaking anything more now. Good. Hmm. Still not showing much pacifist, is it, compared to... There's loads of stuff we can do over here. We've already done that. I'm not breaking any more windows. <laughs> they didn't seem to like me breaking windows. Oh, there's masses of stuff over here. Uh, let's go to this bus stop thing. And I can... I'm going to hack that. I'm not going to destroy it. They don't seem to like destruction. Hack it. I just said hack it. It's not... Uh, it's misbehaving for some reason. There we go. R1. Hacked. You're hacked. Good. Good, 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 good. That's good. That's made us more pacifist. Hacking gives you pacifism and destroy... Yeah, yeah. Worry about the screens. I'm not worried about the screens at the moment. I'm going to... If I can get this blooming thing... I don't want to overload it, the charging point. That sounds like that's a destructive thing to do. Um, it sent me over here. What's to do with the statue? What? Oh no, don't knock the statue down. <laughs> don't put a moustache on that. Uh, just tag it. Tag it, tag it. I'm tagging. Good. Tag this side as well. Honestly, game. Tag, tag, tag. 
We're tagging till the cows come home. Has that made us more pacifist? We don't need masters anymore. We're free. You have told them that already. I suspect they know. How much more have I got to do? Oh look, the pacifism level's going up. This is a good thing. As things go, this is good. What can we do to this? Uh, screen smoke bomb. I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm not... It's, it's hanging on smoke bomb there, isn't it? It's telling me to throw a smoke bomb. Alright, I'm going to throw a smoke bomb. Have we finished tagging everything in sight? Have we made our message plain? Throw it. What's that meant to do? It's pacifist. Good. Um, trying to look around see what else I've missed here. There's a window. Yes. What about the window? What about the window, game? I'm not breaking it. I'll tag it. Oh, slogans. Um, one planet, two races? I don't know. Sounded like a good idea at the time. Oh, look at that. Because he's basically saying we can coexist. 90% pacifist. 9% angry and 1% undecided. <laughs> oh, hang on. I think we may have finished. done to the square we freed hundreds of our people we did it they're coming here come the human police Everyone fall back to Jericho let's go let's go everybody come on come on come on we sent a message without violence just like you wanted good you're reaching out to them when all they feel for us is contempt <sighs> no I hope you know what you're doing you can't fight violence with violence Unless there's no other choice. That's the second time that's been said. Where's she going? Whoa, drones! Oh, Marcus, they've got you again. There we are. This way. Although the last time they saw you... Well, the last time they saw you, you didn't have a human face. Where's North? Where did she go? Oh, are they androids or police officers? What has North. happened here? North! They killed them. They slaughtered them like animals. Sure did. Who? They, I, this is one of the reactions we were expecting. It's unrest. Do we go and find out who did this? It can't have been other androids, can it? We can't, we're going to have to walk through these bodies. Interestingly, even though they've just slaughtered all these androids, whoever they were, he's still 90% pacifist. And that may inform what he does next. I'm just fascinated by this this business of freedom of choice. If they've got the same freedom of choice as humans, something must be making them moral, if you like. Something's making Marcus choose the path of pacifism. He realizes that violence just creates more violence. So if he's violent towards humans, no, no, Marcus, no, 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 no. Please give me a choice game. No, 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 no. You don't have to do this. No. Oh, North's expecting you to pull that trigger. Spare them. Nine for an eye, the world goes blind. Good point. We won't punish a crime. It's really interesting. 
Marcus is this tough guy, but he's a pacifist. They're setting up his morals as higher than those of the humans he's dealing with. At exactly 2 a.m. several terror. This is what I suspected would happen. Different locations were hit in what seems to be a coordinated terrorist attack. And again, shop windows were covered with graffiti demanding rights for androids and other obscure slogans. Police report that pro android graffiti was found in the neighborhoods of Cyberlife stores, and they're still investigating. Two policemen were found in a state of shock near one of the Cyberlife stores. Now, according to our sources, they confirmed that the attackers were a group of androids. Yes, and that they spared their lives. Could our machines now be turning against mm. us? Have androids become a threat to our security? Is this the beginning of a terrorist campaign conducted right here in the United States? This is exactly what I thought was going to happen. I, I did predict this. I knew they'd see it as a terrorist thing because it's you know attacks against the established society, the established way of things being. Man. So there was an option there that Marcus could have led a violent protest. And goodness knows where that would have ended up if he'd not gone for the pacifist message. They still say it's a strong message. Uh, ooh, whoa, whoa, look at this. This presumably is what would have happened if he'd chosen to break windows and destroy statues and all the other things. It would have still resulted in the police arriving, but their response, I suspect, hmm, I don't know, their response may have been the same. Yeah, that was the main point at which decision making could have happened. Although there was an alternative there from blocking the road, uh, which would have led to a dead end path. I presume that means if you didn't get inside the store. Oh, Marcus. He is. He is taking the moral high ground. It's as if the androids are trying to show themselves as not better than the humans, but more capable of making less judgmental, revenge-seeking decisions. It's as if Marcus is already trying to show. He knows, but he's trying to teach all the other androids around him and also maybe contradict North in this regard. He's trying to show them that the way forward is by showing humans we're not like you. We don't react to violence with violence. The The media isn't picking up on any of this, of course. The media is purely picking up on the side of it being, and I suspected this would happen. I mentioned this at the end of episode eight, although I thought that the I thought the word terrorist had already been used. I might have got that wrong at that point um, in the media, but it's certainly being used now <laughs> as a result of what they've just done. Uh, it's an interesting tactic to take, isn't it? Freeing all these androids from the cyber life stores. Mm. Okay, um, I've gone on now. It's an hour and 24 minutes of gameplay. It will cut down with my intro, but then it will go up again slightly. So I don't know what it will be. It's quite a long episode. I'm going to stop there. That was the end of episode nine. Um, obviously, I will be doing some thinking between now and episode 10, and there will be notes um, to help me organize my thoughts. So I hope you'll join me for that, for episode 10, which will be coming along shortly. Thank you ever so much for watching, um, and I'll see you then. Bye.